All right, I apologize if I'm a little uh, tired and gross looking in this. It's because I am. I actually saw this movie like last uh, Friday or Saturday or something like that. I don't even remember. But um, I've been busy since then. There's a lot going on at the house. And I don't get nearly as much time to myself as, I, uh, as I'm used to. Not that that's a bad thing. But it doesn't leave me a whole lot of, a lot of time to shoot things. But um, I saw This is the End. And it fills me with an emotion that I'm not used to lately. Um, I actually really liked it. <laughs> and that's what I'm not really used to. is Because the, the more I think about it, TV has really kind of eclipsed movies this this year. Things have not been good uh, at the in, in Hollywood and movies this year. Uh, it's a whole lot of shit. Um... Really, I could probably count off the good ones on, on one hand. Um, and this is the end, probably, is, is the latest edition. Because it's actually really funny. It's really, it's kind of simple. But it's pretty pretty dang funny. Um, there's a couple, there's a few too many dick jokes thrown in there. Um, it starts to get a little old. Um, and a couple of things don't pay off like you would think. Like, uh, or like, like you would hope. Um, what's his name? Danny McBride's character, not much uh, resolution to that. Uh, they they build up how much of an asshole he is to all the other characters, and then he's not in the movie for a little while, and um, there's a payoff later um, that was kind of set up before, before, and it's not nearly as satisfying as you want it to be. Um, but it works. It's kind of funny. Um, the, the, the idea of being behind the movie that the world is ending and it's uh, how these celebrities um, react to the whole thing, how they try and survive. Um, granted, they're still playing, they're still playing characters. It's just that they're, they're not, it's kind of the, they are being themselves to a degree. Like, a. uh, uh an overplayed version of themselves. It's like uh, me on Twitter. Um, if you read any, or me on the internet at all. If you read uh, anything that I post or tweet or whatever, um, it's always an exaggeration of how I actually feel. There's a nugget of truth to it, but then it's it's, it's exaggerated on purpose. And that's kind of what they're doing in this. Um, you know, uh, Jay Baruchel being just. Okay, while we're on the subject of Jay Baruchel, I'm just going to go ahead and go on a limb that don't like him. Not at all. Not personally, obviously. I don't know the guy. But, um, f fuck if he isn't, like, the blandest, whitest, most generic-looking actor, generic actor out there. Um, there is not a single role in any of his movies that was just like, wow, he was perfect for that part. Seriously, he just fills the role. That's it. It's it's like when you've got a character in a movie that uh, is too boring or bland or flat, two-dimensional, for anyone talented to have to be uh, degraded into doing. You get Jay Ray Rochelle. Um, Sorcerer's Apprentice. I bet he's... Good job. Real proud of that one. How to Train a Dragon. Good movie. He didn't do anything in it. In fact, if you hadn't told me that was him, you wouldn't have known because he just sounds like a guy. He doesn't sound like he has any uh, special voice. He has n nothing. That's, that, that's what it comes down to. Is there's just nothing special to him in the movie, in his movies. Um, he has a following because girls think he's good looking. I'm sorry, but that's it. Um, the other guys at least have some kind of signature personality trait or quirk or something about them that makes them individuals. I don't know if you want to call them unique, um, and it doesn't mean that you like them necessarily, but you can identify them by something. Um, Seth Rogen and his, his, and the movie acknowledges this, and it pokes fun at the fact that, you know, Seth Rogen is known very much for playing pretty much the same role in every movie. He's got that laugh, that one laugh that everybody identifies um, Michael Cera, kind of the same thing. Um, 
and you know the list goes on. So each of these people have something. Each of the actors in this movie, in real life as well as in the movie, have something unique about them that you know you you know who they are. J.B. Rochel has I couldn't tell you a single thing about any of his movies that I'd be like, oh, he's really good at this, or he's or he's re really well known for this. Um, uh, see, comedies are tough to talk about because, uh, especially with this, because this isn't the kind of movie where I could be like, oh, the the setup for this joke was paid off with this and rabble, rabble, rabble. It's kind of just uh, surface level kind of jokes. Um, it all ha depends on the delivery of the actors and their uh, their charisma and whether they play off each other or not. Um, there's one scene, uh, there's a couple scenes, well, for the most part, that works well. They play with, off each other really well. There's a couple that either are forced or the editors, like, just went nuts with it. Um, where they, they drag the scene out way too long. Like, uh, there's a scene where Danny McBride and James Franco, um, are having a, are talking about jerking off to a magazine, and they seriously, it's like the director just told them, like, just improvise, like, jerking off cum jokes for a half hour, and we'll pick the best parts and we'll use that. But then it's like the editor sat down and was just like, I want to use all of it. Because it's all funny. And it's like, no, that's the, uh, uh, that's the Judd Apatow style of filmmaking, where you just film an hour of, like, a million takes of imp improv and then just use all of it. Um... Do I again? I don't know what else to say about this is the end, except that it's it's probably it's one of the most uh, it's probably the most fun you'll have at the movie so far this year because we're almost in July and things are not looking good. <laughs> um, I'm still holding out for a couple of things, but for the most part, um, especially in terms of comedy, good God, this is pretty much the only comedy out there that's worth seeing. What are you going to see? The fucking internship, white people problems? No, white people. No, no. I'm not trying to be racist. I just mean the ba dum bum psh kind of humor. The, the shit that should have died out with friends in the 90s, but didn't. Um, yeah, I would say, uh, this is the end is definitely recommend. Uh, definitely, I would go see it. Um, I, would, I will say that if you are not a fan of any one of these people in this, in, of the actors that you've seen advertised in the movie, um, approach it with some hesitation, maybe even wait a little bit for it to either get to a smaller theater or uh, to have like a free ticket or something like that or a coupon because it is very much those actors doing what they're known for in this movie, just kind of exaggerated. Um, except again for J.P. Rochelle and Jonah Hill a little bit. I'm not sure what was going on with his character. I got everybody else, but I don't know what the hell he was doing in the movie. Um... But yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, sorry for the kind of vague recommendation. Kind of boring. But um, just go see This is the End and you will see what I mean.